Nigerians are lamenting the devastating impact of Saturday's early morning rain on their houses and other property. And it's on that note that we welcome you back to this program. This is a live, the Sunday talk show here on Arise News. Flooding was caused by the heavy rainfall, which submerged many houses in the affected areas. Okubaba, Inagige, Egbede, Ikotun, Ajegunle, Anojo of Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital, were among the worst hit areas as the floods swept through streets and houses. Residents were seen bailing out water from taking over their houses. The flood water covered many houses in Ijaneke, Alaba, International Market Area, Ajangbadi, and Itigbi, all in the Ojo local council area. Water also overflowed most drainage channels in the affected areas and escaped into houses. In some neighbors, it destroyed fences and gates. The Territorial Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency, Brian Paniloye, appealed to residents to take utmost precautions as NEMA and other emergency agencies were assessing some flashpoints and holding discussions with the affected communities with a view to proffering immediate solutions to the situation. And by the way, it's not only Lagos that is affected. Reports of flooding have been reported in low-lying states uh, on the River Benway, River Niger, as far away as Anambra State. People are dealing with flood. And of course, we also have reports that there have been global warming issues in Libya, where over 30,000 persons have died as a result of flooding. And also, fire incidents in the entire Central and Eastern uh, Mediterranean uh, region, and also in Europe, in Egypt, and also in Hawaii. So what exactly are we dealing with? Global warming, climate change, are we ready? Are we prepared? Have we learned any lessons? I'm now being joined by Ibrahim Faniloye, who is coordinator of Southwest Zona Zone of the National Emergency Management Agency for an overview of all those stories emanating from natural disasters. Thank you very much, Mr. Farin Loi, for joining us. Uh, good evening. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Farin Loi, for joining us on this live this Sunday talk show. Well, as I have pointed out, crisis is everywhere. You're welcome, sir. From Europe to the United States, to Libya, to the Mediterranean region, and Nigeria. But in Nigeria, we have a specific problem. Apart from rainfall, we also have this issue of global warming. We also have this issue of uh, release of water from Lagdo Dam, for which Nigeria seems not to be prepared. And this weekend, we have had issues of floods in parts of uh, Lagos. Mr. Farin Louie, why is the National Emergency Management uh, Agency asleep? Because I think that's the problem to start with. Well, uh, thank you, sir. The National Emergency Management Agency, or the nation in general, is never asleep for what is uh, happening now. Uh, what we have control of we have controlled them, and uh, we have succeeded in minimizing, or let's say mitigating the effects of uh, the predicted, unprecedented rainfall expected so far in this month and next month. We have mobilized resources right from January till date, irrespective of uh, who is in government or not. So all, us are, all hands are on deck. We are managing it to the best of everything we can deploy. Uh, Mr. Farin <laughs> you have mentioned rainfall. But we were also told that Lagdo Dam, you know, the authorities in Cameroon were going to release water. Our own uh, dam in... Uh, Fufore local government 
you know, in Adamawa State. We have not done anything about it. Every year, we get this scaremongering. Oh, the Cameroonians are going to release water. And then we get this scaremongering. Uh, the water level as a result of rainfall, every rainfall is going to go up. So my question, which you have not answered, is how prepared are we? And how have we addressed this situation? People have been uh, taken away, you know, properties. Well, we are, we are fully prepared and we are addressing it as it. Well, we are prepared, fully prepared, more than 100% prepared. You know, any emergency management uh, agency will always work for worst scenario. You know, you have other, you witnessed what happened yesterday from 2 a.m. So close to 1 p.m., almost 11 hours rainfall, every downpour. And what we had yesterday was just, uh, although it's a, it's a pathetic situation, losing one life is, a, is very, very pathetic. And he lost, we lost him because he refused to heed to instruction. So if we have prepared, one step we have done, the political will. We understood some governors, elections, new legislation, uh, I mean, the elections took place. We swore them in immediately before the swearing, before elections, we swung into action. We were, like in Lagos, we identified 25 hotspots that uh, we are expecting flooding. We worked with the state authorities and 99.9% .9 of all those areas identified were worked on. And uh, that's why we are witnessing the low casualty from this type of unprecedented 10-year rainfall. So, thank God, uh, about uh, Fufore or about any dam management, all the uh, river basin authorities across the country, they have been instructed since January this year to start gradual release of uh, water, excess water in the dam so that it can receive fresh water in this year's uh, wet season. And that is why we, you have been witnessing uh, little impact. And most of the dams are now, they are releasing their water on a gradual basis. The effect of uh, Lagdo Dam is not the major problem in the country, it's the rainfall, direct rainfall from the nature. You can control what you know is coming, like the Lagdo Dam, like the uh, water from the River Niger. We can control them. But what is coming from the interland are the issue. We, don't, we cannot control them, and we cannot know when they are coming up. Last Friday, upper week Friday, we had a rainfall that we got saved us from uh, having the air crash, and we succeeded in doing that. So across the country, there is no case of saying whether we are not prepared or not prepared. We are fully prepared. We prepared for the worst scenario. Apart from uh, the uh, advocacy visit of the Director General and management of the agency, along with NISA, that's Nigerian Hydrological Agency, and NIMET together, the three agencies had to carry out advocacy visit immediately after the new administration came in to executive governors of states and other agencies necessary. Just uh, on Friday, uh, Friday, training, continuous training of stakeholders took place along with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of uh, Humanitarian Affairs. We sponsored them. This Monday again, another set of training will take place to be able to manage the dynamism that is unfolding across the uh, country, across the world, so to say. So whatever is, uh, we have done so far is to the best uh, global standard that we have done. Okay, uh, Mr. Farrell, I get your point. You say it's not about Lagdo Dam, it's about every rainfall. You are a Yoruba man. A few people in uh, Nema, both at the federal level and also at the state level, consider the possibility of engaging the services of rain catchers, you know, uh, or rainmakers, as they are otherwise known, so that every year you won't come on television and tell us the same stories, you know, about, oh, it's heavy rainfall, rain is falling uh, from the heavens, and all that. I mean, won't you people begin to consider uh, the services of rainmakers where, you know, professionals like yourself are failed? Uh, 
to address the problem? Well, uh, to uh, Africans, they, are, they may think there is somebody who can hold the rain. Nobody can hold the nature. Nobody has control over the nature. Nobody can control that. The same thing, nobody can control uh, when somebody will be, when there will be uh, the date or minute somebody will, be, will come alive. So the same thing, nobody can control the nature. The nature is being controlled by God Almighty who created it, and we have no control over it. So all what we need to do is to carry out all necessary uh, action to mitigate the effect on the people. Reduce the loss of life, manage properties so that the effect will not be so, uh, will not disrupt normal uh, life of the people for a long time. Like what happened yesterday in Lagos, after one or two hours after the rainfall, the whole place dried up. Where, uh, where, rain, where the running water where was uh, uh, disturbed houses, some of them, we who had the opportunity, they pumped them out and they slept in their houses. So what they need for them to return back to their uh, houses, we provided them that yesterday so that whoever, those who could not stay for long in their houses, return back late in the evening. Okay, um, Mr. Farnley, let me ask you. It's not only Nigeria that is affected. We have had reports of disaster from Morocco, from Libya, from Hawaii, from other parts of the, of the world. Some people attribute it to global warming, climate change, and a lack of uh, commitment on the part of world leaders to deal with the challenge of changes in the climate situation that we all face. Do you think that this is uh, all these incidents, do you think that they are acts of God or the result of carelessness on political leadership, on the part of political leadership? Well, you see, when we talk of disaster risk reduction, it is a strategy to minimize the effect of any uh, hacks that will occur in case of disasters. So to, to mitigate the effect. And then secondly, climate change, is not, we cannot add, uh, well, climate change is said to be attributable to activities of human beings. Cutting down trees, uh, carbon uh, dioxide emission, all these things are attributed to it. But from history, from the day the head was created, climate change started, it's only got to a level of uh, calamity, uh, the level of calamity now in recent, in the last two, 20, 30 years ago. So the activities of extreme weather is basically climate change, which if political will is there by political, by, by the world leaders, definitely we can reduce it. Indications are coming in that even the climate, the climate change reduction uh, is reducing on a gradual basis. So we still need more commitment by the world leaders to reduce the emission and uh, planting of more trees, which every Nigerians, every individuals can do within our premises, by our verandas, by anything, we can plant trees to reduce the effect of the climate change. So basically, the political will and activities of human being are needed to okay, increase the planting okay. trees, to reduce the carbon dioxide in the air. Okay, Mr. Farin Louis, if you could just, as we begin to wrap up, talk specifically about your understanding of political will by the Nigerian government and what you think that the Nigerian government needs to do. Because every year we get told, oh, uh, water level is going to rise. Uh, you know, there will be big rainfall. Uh, people should move from uh, low lying uh, areas on the uh, plains of the River Niger and River Benway to higher lands and all that. Nobody listens anyway. And yet, every year we go through the same ritual. People die, houses get flooded, properties are destroyed, and then, you know, the season passes, and we come back next year. I'm sure next year you are going to be on this program again, you know, to talk about this same subject. 
So what do you think is the problem? The areas of omission, particularly with political will. Or are we all helpless? Our houses will be flooded every year. Our neighborhoods will be flooded. Nothing will happen. People will lose their properties and they will move on. You are uh, in Nema and the Southwest, which you represent, is a major area of concern. Uh, Mr. Well, Fahim, uh, Lula, you uh, political okay. will. Yes, I'm answering now. Okay. The political will is there already. Uh, if you look at the unprecedented rainfall in the last, uh, this uh, Saturday and upper uh, Friday, something that happened in the midnight while people are asleep, you can imagine the number of lives that would have been lost if states, local government, and federal government are not working to mitigate the effect. The enlightenment program is there. The awareness creation is there. Door-to-door -door, uh, visitation to people who are in a flashpoint area were conducted. People are responding. We have been receiving reports that, oh, thank God government did this. Thank God government did that. For them to have done this, uh, expansion of drainages, expansion of uh, canals, uh, building the embankment to prevent any overflow f going to some uh, area that are uh, vulnerable to such flooding. So apart from that, uh, we will work towards containing whatever the phenomenon is bringing. Once you, are empowered, once you empower the people, you tell them what to do, how to manage it, most of the activities will be reduced. Like what happened in Libya or anything, just about two weeks, uh, three, about three weeks ago, uh, on the NEMA platform, a sort of diagram was posted. Then some uh, journalists started asking, what is this uh, diagram is talking about? And this uh, wind movement is only in Cameroon. What does Nigeria have to do with it? Before I now told them that this wind program, uh, this wind diagram that you are seeing flowing, is flowing down to Lagos from the La from Lagos. It will get to it will get to the ocean. By the time it gets to the ocean, the momentum will be increased. And within a year, a week after getting to Lagos, after a week, the European countries and uh, Americans will have the effects of what we are having. So definitely, it's a circle. So whatever we are doing, because we have had the early warning system effective, we were able to prepare for it. What we cannot control is just what we come down. So when you are talking of every year event, yes, every year event, if we cannot control it, what is coming down from the heaven, there is no way we will know what is definitely happening. So we will only work towards the worst scenario as we have been working to save life and property. Okay, Mr. Fanloy, we've talked about what you call what is coming down from heaven. We've talked about climate change, global warming, and all of that. How about man-made issues? Because at the heart of this matter, we have had people say, look, uh, there are physical planning issues, people building on drainages, and the people who build on drainages are essentially, majorly, you know, significantly, uh, persons who are privileged. And so they block the drainages, and then they seem also, you know, um, an attempt to address man-made issues about clearing of drainages, you know, clogged drainages, and all of that. Uh, so many big men in Nigeria. So is that an issue for you as uh, a subject area as part? who is involved in disaster well, management? Well, uh, it's an issue. Yes, it's an issue. Uh, like in Lagos, when we observed gaps, we met the Ministry of uh, Environment. We met other agencies like the physical planning. We told them this problem is here. Uh, where they need to work, they worked there, like in Okoba. You know, last year we lost uh, about four lives in Okoba Aziz, and really again we lost some life at Alimosho Okishagun. We lost three siblings of the same parent. I mean, three siblings. So this year, 
It was one of the target uh, points that we addressed. And Ministry of Environment had to expand and carried out a lot of reconstruction work between uh, February, when we alerted them, to the time the rain, is, uh, the rain start, uh, started falling. Apart from the, like, uh, only yesterday, after yesterday incident, we observed some areas that physical planning had to come in into. So after the rainy season this year, we will definitely look at the review all the activities of uh, various agencies and find a way solution, to, uh, solution to the gaps identified. However, one major gap that is uh, always continuing uh, to raise heads is the activities of uh, local governments. The local government needs to come on board. When the state federal are fully engaged and doing their work, the local government's authorities seem to be sleeping. Like in some of the metropolitan cities, I mean the uh, urban cities, some drainages are blocked. They are converted to motor parking space, some for cultural uh, purposes. The local government have authority to prosecute and find such or close the building entirely. This is not forthcoming. After uh, last Friday rainfall, this issue was raised. Some local government started, I mean, some local government and some private business organizations started clearing the frontage of their houses. So this is another issue. And uh, when we observed this, the Director General of NEMA had to meet some state governor in advocacy visit, discuss with them on how to get the local government's uh, authority to do their own part of the uh, challenge. So okay, we are working towards getting an effective system. Okay, Mr. Farin as we begin to wrap up, Lagos State is Continue, not the sir. only place where we have issues. We have issues across Nigeria. It's a national problem. But the question, yes, flowing from what you have just said now, is this, which is, what is the level of synergy, collaboration, cooperation? from the federal level, to the state level, to the local government level. All of you are just working in silos without any direction, creating problems for ordinary people, you know, who are expecting that government should serve their interests year on year. Well, uh, if you talk of synergy, and partnership between the three tiers of government is very, very effective. President, just last week, Mr. Farinlo, you are contradicting yourself. You are contradicting Hello? yourself. You just said some local governments don't do what they I'm should coming, do. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when you talk of local governments, when you talk of local, uh, the state government, the state governments directly controls the local government. So when you have good synergy with state governments, and the federal government talks to the federal state government, there is gap between you and the local governments. Can you bridge this gap? And you know, the federal government does not have power, based on the federal state unit uh, uh, issue, to come down and start talking to local government directly, all what you need to do is talk to the people who they report to, and the governor uh, should have done the right thing, call the local government chairman, do this, do that, in, in, uh, in compliance with what NEMA or, or any federal agencies, because when, uh, when NIMET or NISA releases any prediction, it circulated down to not only to federal agencies, but to state governments. And it's expected that the state governments across the country should down, uh, cascade it down to community level, not only local government, to community level. Because when it gets to local government, the co local government has to reach out to the traditional ruler. The traditional ruler has to reach out to his constituencies. Apart from that, the local government is supposed to get to the community development associations. Who are supposed to be uh, the local government supposed to be controlling the CDAs? So, to us, we are doing the right thing. 
To the extent that we are even, NEMA is even dealing with some local government when they observe some gaps, they will go down to the local government, go down to traditional ruler and sit and community level, we have grassroots development as say, grassroots, grassroots emergency management as, uh, associations, I mean volunteers at almost every local government in the country who manage disasters before any statutory agencies get there because disasters start in the community. So there is a gap between the local and the state. So the, we expect that gap to be filled up. Remember, the ecological fund is 100%. States takes, state and local government take 75%. Federal government takes only 25%. So the activities of uh, federal government is just limited within that 25%. So if you should judge, there should be more commitment by the local government. Doing the right thing, their statutory role. When a building is constructed, the local governments are directly in part. And do you know the, local, uh, the federal government does not have control over allocation of land, over construction of buildings. So it is the state government, and the state government cannot do it alone without the local government. Okay, Mr. Farrelly, I would like Presently to... now, I, just like I told... Please go ahead. Hello? Please go ahead. Hello, please go ahead, Mr. Farrelly. No, I said what we expect is uh, the local government should be able to coordinate the grassroots. I've been, I've, there have been an instance where a traditional ruler has not been able, was not able to meet a local government. He went there five times, a local government chairman, he went there five times to complain about a particular construction that he, the community thought uh, they felt it would disrupt the free flow of water. But unfortunately, the traditional ruler could not assess the local government chairman until when we now got there. When we got there, the traditional ruler had to voice out that, oh, I've tried to reach, uh, to reach you, but unfortunately we could not. After five attempts, the, it was then the, uh, the traditional, the chairman of the local government told the traditional ruler, come and see me, so, 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 so time, I will pave way for you to see me. So there should be, there, there, you know, the gap, if, it's, if there is a gap uh, from the grassroots and uh, disaster risk reduction strategy is bottom up policy. So if you don't start uh, the effective disaster management from the grassroots, then definitely uh, the local government structure. If the state federal does their part, the local government must do their own part to have full structure that can serve the people. However, the people themselves, they are not even helping the matters because in front of their houses, if you block, it, if you block drainage so that deaths from another area will not pass through your place, by the time the deaths get to where you block, it will stop then definitely the water will not be able to pass through the drainage. Rather, it will, pass, it will overflow onto the road. So the, com the community, the residents, are not helping matters in many areas. Go to some DRA, go to Aja, and so many other places. If you go to Abeokuta, the same thing. You go to Ibadan, you see the same scenario playing out. So if local government had done the right thing, they will, all this blockage of drainages in the neighborhood wouldn't have happened. Mr. Farrelly, thank you very much for joining us on this day live, this Sunday talk show. I get your point. Is the UN through Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, that talks about disaster risk reduction, and for that to work, you must have synergy at all levels of government. But what you have just confirmed now is that the Nigerian people are on their own. Although you ended on the note saying. The Nigerian people themselves are guilty. You know, they don't respect the rules. They don't observe basic environmental uh, uh, guidelines. So no synergy between the federal government and the state, the state and the uh, local government, which means we are on our own. We will expect more flooding, more properties will be destroyed. And next year, we will be back on the same story. And I'll be glad to invite you again uh, next year to come onto this program and say where we are still where we are. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ibrahim. Well, uh, uh, I don't think you are, I don't think you are saying the right thing. Okay. The right thing is how can you enhance participation of the people by the local government? If the states 
have done that. You know, each uh, the statutory really, the primary drainage, drainage system are the responsibility of the local government. And federal government does not have total control over what happens at the local government level. And uh, the uh, federal, federated unit system, we have limitations. You can't just impose something on the state. They will question it. So if you talk of disaster risk reduction, uh, all state structures have been trained and we have advocated, the director general have gone around to advocate for proper disaster management in all the states of the federation. Local states have fair, uh, less than 60% effective disaster management structure. Other states may, may not even have be quantified, may be rated to up to 30%. So when you see this defective area, it is not the NEMA that should be blamed. So the state uh, government or the local government authorities ought to be taken uh, up on these issues. It's OK. I get your point, Mr. Uh, you above, know, all, no. above all, when you, when you, if you observe what happened yesterday, ordinarily, you should expect more casualties for a rain to start 2 AM when people are asleep. And we did not have much issue based on this, but somebody who refused to heed to instruction committed like committed suicide. I get your point. You understand? I so get if, your point. at least credit must be given. Credit must be given for our proactive measures and mitigation, mitigative activities that have been put in place by the states and local governments, so to say, and federal government. I get your point. Invariably in Nigeria, the people get blamed for being victims. The people get blamed for being short, uh, uh, short changed, and that's precisely. Well, what uh, I, I think uh, the the number of people that died, I'm the to number of people that time. died during the hurricane, hurricane Catherine, or the people who sorry for the number of people that died in Libya or in Haiti or in any place. If in Nigeria we are not appreciated for what we have done so far, that despite this uh, unprecedented for the past 10 to 15 years, this type of rainfall had never been witnessed, is not appreciated, that the number of people that died or the, 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 rate, the, the way it was managed is not appreciated, is another thing for Nigerians to appreciate the effort of government. If it is claimed that people are victimized or 50 people are being uh, blamed for it. So we, governments, either state or federal, they have tried and we are trying. All our aim is we should deliver according to your conscience. We are delivering to the best of our put, uh, uh, ability. We want people, we want you. I, I expected the media to move around during the rain for as early as 5 a.m. to start moving around as we were in the rain, moving around from one spot to the other. If we did not go around at that time, we wouldn't have detected some uh, flashpoints where people are being uh, isolated or disturbed by the rain. So we saved some lives. We saved, even during the rain, I expected in a normal, I was a journalist, I practiced as a journalist, at this critical time, you want to get a scoop. So we should move out, see what you can do at the right time. Okay, Mr. Farinloye. So uh, all of us. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Farinloye, yes, I guess the comparison with uh, Libya will be a little bit misplaced. Libya, Eastern Libya, where you have in the yes, village yes, of Dena, yeah. uh, people yeah, dying yeah, up to about 30,000 now. Libya is a fair state, except you are confirming also that Nigeria is a fair state. Now, even if one life is lost, it's enough well, reason you, for if, us if to If you be don't concerned. compare Libya, what of, uh, what of Morocco? What of Morocco? Morocco is not a first state. Okay. What, when people build what, in a... What of Hawaii? Uh, what, earthquake what, what, area. What, what so, of Hawaii? So my, what, of, what of Greece? Well... You know, what of Bulgaria? Now, all of that will fall into the category... When China... I know when China... No, I, know I don't want to... All uh, of that will fall under the I'm category... I'm a public servant. Of, I'm a public servant. Uh, global warming. Is it global warming we're dealing in with Nigeria, or negligence? In Nigeria, what are you dealing with? 
the, what, what are, you, are you able to control what is coming down from the nature? Can you do it? You are believing on, a, on what we call a, soothsayers, which does not exist anywhere, that whether somebody can control the rain. It's not possible. It's not possible. So when you walk towards a war scenario and it comes, and you have, you have mitigated the impact on the people, then you are blaming that you are not prepared. Well, I don't pray you have a domestic incident. When you have domestic accident, you will know that when disaster comes, you may not be aware about it. But when you are aware about a disaster, like when, you're, when in the household you are cooking, or the gas is somehow an accident occur, will you be blamed for it? Will okay. you be blamed for an explosion from your own household or you sleep from a from toilet? So you, when we have information, the information we have, we worked on it completely. And the impact, the major thing in disaster management is when an impact is mitigated, you lose a minima. Minima loss you is maintained. Nowhere in the whole world that you will not score higher. Yes, you, uh, Nigerians, some people may blame the country that, oh, you are not doing enough. But in global standard, disaster management in Nigeria is one of the best. Okay, on that note. There is nowhere you don't have challenges. So if there is, if there is a problem anywhere, you only highlight it, not just generalization. Okay, on that note, Mr. Ibrahim Farinloye, uh, Southwest uh, Coordinator of yes, the sir. National Emergency Management Agency. I would like to thank you very much for joining us on this Live, this Sunday talk show.